Because sometimes it is appropriate to expose people and to expose and bring things to the surface. And I'm definitely not for just cover-ups of things that, are, that should never be covered up. And this is a problem in a lot of churches, is that there are too many times when a church will cover up scandals, like, like horrible sins, whether it be pedophilia or infidelity, adultery, things like that, that, look, we're not just trying to sweep things under the rug as if it just never happened and just pretend like everything's okay and no, just keep going on and this person's going to keep, you know. No way. No way. Absolutely not. I don't, I don't agree with that at all in no circumstance. But you know what? There's other things that don't just all need, you know, on the one hand, you've got very grievous problems and grievous sins. Like 1 Corinthians 5 type stuff where the Bible teaches that, hey, if a brother does these things, you're supposed to put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That's what the Bible says. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 at the end of the passage. It goes through a whole list of sins and says if, if people are guilty, if, a, if someone who's called a brother is guilty of doing these things, then you need to put away from among yourselves that wicked person. And that's another reason why people say, oh, you're a cult because, you know, it's like, look, we just follow what the Bible says. If the Bible says to put that person away from among you, then that's what we're going to do because we, we love the word of God and we want to operate and do things by the word of God. And if people are guilty of that stuff, then it needs to be known because how else are you going to separate from that person if it's not ever even known? Now, most of those things, though, would still be done appropriately here. It doesn't mean if someone in the church is guilty of doing something, that's one of those sins that we need to put them away for, it doesn't mean we just have to go and blast them publicly for the whole world to know. That's not appropriate. But if someone's guilty of committing some crime, especially like a crime against a child or something, we've got to worry about them going somewhere else, you better believe that, that that's going to get blasted. If you've got false prophets that are out there deceiving the, the hearts and minds of the simple and leading people to hell, then absolutely, we'll call that out. We'll expose that. That needs to be broadcast publicly. But not everything is to be broadcast publicly, and not everyone should be, you know, running with this and, and, and dealing with it. Everything has an, has an order. You know, um, we're in Deuteronomy 13, we're going to see here, you know, false prophets should be exposed. And the Bible teaches that even if they're family members, this is something that's so important that you need to expose the false prophet who's trying to lead people away from the Lord and go off and follow some other religion. Now, I understand that we aren't currently living under these laws of the land, but this is still the word of God and how God feels about these things. Okay, so we could still apply this and learn from this on how God would treat these things. Look at verse number one. The Bible reads, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Now, first of all, this is not just your average person who doesn't believe the Bible. Because your average person who doesn't believe the Bible isn't claiming to be a prophet. And, oh, man, I've got this dream and there's this sign coming and there's this wonder, you know. That's a different type of person. Would you not agree with that? If this is someone who is out there claiming to have special knowledge and visions and is called, would be considered a prophet, right? So this is who the Bible is describing here. Not your average person. This is just someone unique that, that would fill a role that's being described here as a prophet, a dreamer of dreams. Verse 2, And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. So he's saying if this guy says, hey, there's this event that's going to happen or whatever, and then it comes to pass. They make this prophecy and it actually happens. But he's saying, so let's go serve these other gods who's not the Lord. This is, this is what the Bible is describing. Verse number three, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. So don't listen to that guy. Just because he says something and it happens to come to pass, that doesn't mean that he's of God. If he's telling you to go after other gods, he's not of God. Right? right? I mean, it, makes, it makes perfect sense. Or the dream of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. So he's saying is God's testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. 
And not cleave unto man, not cleave unto some prophet, cleave unto God. And that's what I was saying before, you know, person, people who actually genuinely have this belief should be, you know, sticking to what the word of God says, regardless of what man does. 